I can't hear stuff you. is filled up. But in any case, I hope I hope this can get all the way through. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Murphy, the publisher of the National Black Unity News. Today, I'm interviewing a longtime friend, a longtime entrepreneur, a lady who has put in the time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into a business. She has um, a multitude of talents from uh, fitness, health, and the whole gamut. And, um, and she's continuously to add more things to her arsenal. And uh, before I get into all the details, because like I say, I can, we will be talking forever if I go with, with all the things that she has done in the past and all the attributes that she has brought forth in, in, her, in her journey. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Miss Catherine Brown. How you doing, Miss Brown? Which is great. I'm glad to see that, you know. And like I say, you know, we go a long way back. But then again, we're looking to today and we're looking forward to tomorrow. And so, um, first of all, you know, out of your own words, out of your own mouth, let people know who you are and what you do. Um, I am a wellness strategist. And what does a wellness strategist encompass? It, it encompasses one's behavior and lifestyle management. And in that, which includes fitness, um, nutrition and culinary arts. So bringing that all together is part of lifestyle and living a healthy lifestyle because sometimes we always say we have to eat healthy or we have to exercise. But if our thinking process and how to on take that journey is not there, then we're not able to do it. We focus on one component and not all, and all is what changes our overall health. Okay. Now, um, as I mentioned to the audience earlier, that you you, you encompass a lot. Uh, you know, since I met you, you when I first met you, you was real heavy into just the fitness boot camps and things like that when I first met you. But then you added some new material to your arsenal, like culinary, you know, and everything like that. Explain a little bit about how, how, why you went into that direction with culinary. Well, I always give credit to my clients for building who I'm currently is, am today and the services that I offer because I found that one, that if a client, no matter what their goals may be, if it's weight loss or if it's um, focusing on chronic illness, that they will show up for the training, but the struggle always came with nutrition. So I began the journey of studying nutrition and finding out that it's no one cookie cutter to fit all and that nutrition is a science because what we don't realize is the things that we ingest into our body, the impact that it has on our anatomy, which is our whole makeup of our physiology of um, sustaining life. So from that being and helping out one with the nutritional aspect, my clients would always refer back to it's easy, it's, it's challenging to give us something and tell us to make a change in our eating habits, but then it's hard when it gets home and finding the time to prepare the meals or to cook. So taking all of that um, information in and finding out really that we don't even know how to cook, which shared more of an interest in going into the culinary arts aspect. And that I found out that we're taught to use a lot of unhealthy ingredients to make the food give it the flavor and taste which our palate enjoys, which is um, butter, salt, and sugar, your three enemies to chronic disease. So I took on a different aspect and wanting to transition recipes into a healthier because once again, we set goals, but we don't think about that what we consume or what's externally in our body that we take on can be an enemy to the inter infrastructure of our bodies. Um, and so that's why, I, once again, I give all credit to my clients, and I love the journey has been a journey. I love the journey. I love helping individuals out and understanding further about the nutrition and the culinary aspect and then how the fitness play into it. Well, you know, um, you know, as you know, I've been around for some time now, and I and I didn't mention this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Miss Catherine Brown is also 
an editor in the National Black Unity News. You can find her information in our publication. She was there from the inception of the publication, and we thank you for that, Ms. Brown, because you gave us some fantastic information. But at the same time, as I said to the audience before, we go back a long way. And, and, and I've met a lot of people in my journey who's in health, healthness, health and wellness and everything else, but I never met a person like yourself that encompasses so many attributes to, to your, your, your <laughs> trade. Here you are, first of all, you started, I mean, the Ivy called fitness. And then you had calling her, and then you jumped up with something else. You had spices and stuff. So how, tell me how that come about. Um, well, once again, the spices were a, por a part of the culinary because to help to eliminate using some of the ingredients that's not necessary because if we use just our natural herbs and spices to enhance the flavor of our food, it's healthy properties that we are incorporating back into the food. So that was what I saw the missing component of once again, that cooking technique or honing the cooking technique and educating one on how to enhance your dish but not enhance it with the enemy of the body. So not saying salt is totally, but we have been using salt so readily in an amount that we don't need it because sodium is already in our food because it's a preservative to help to preserve food. So if it's in our canned goods, it's in our meats, it's in anything except for our fresh produce, sodium. If you look at your nutrition facts, sodium is there. Sugar, we just love sweet uh, sweet things. So we are always placing sugar or adding sugar. And I remember the days when I was raised, we did Kool-Aid. So we did, yeah. we did we pour tons of sugar in that Kool-Aid. You look at the desserts that we consume the candy. We're just taking in way too much sugar, and sugar is our enemy. Sugar is the enemy to cancer. Sugar is the enemy to diabetes. Sugar is the beginning of inflammation in the body. That's the onset of the process of a disease. So, and butter. What is butter? Butter is fat. You have different types of, you have margarine out there that shouldn't even be on the market. But butter and constantly using that saturated fat, what does it do? It do it sets us over a long period of a time of a high potential of cholesterol or clogged up our arteries. Wow. Let me ask you something. You know, this is kind of personal, though. You know, everybody has a why or a purpose in life. What what drove you to this in the beginning? Um, well, interesting. My background actually started off uh, being a cardiac tech at GBMC. So I was a cardiac tech, and I couldn't stand death, meaning I was working on all your critical care floors that was either the step-down unit or CCU or ICU, and I couldn't cope with death. So looking at that and giving credit also to my GYN physician that looked at me and says, you have four kids, and underneath this last fourth child of your last birth, you weren't, you're not retaining your current weight. My current weight was 130-something pounds. That was my reality check. And I began to make a change in my nutrition habits and start to exercise as well as, once again, working in a hospital setting. And I sat behind the desk one day, being a student that was getting ready to enter into the nursing program, just completed all of my prerequisites, and I made the decision. I'm looking at the staff that I'm working with, meaning the physicians, the nurses, and the ancillary staff, and I said to myself, I don't want to be here. I need to be out in the world helping individuals not to visit this aspect of their life, meaning coming in here because you didn't take care of yourself. So from that point on, that began my journey and entry into the health and wellness that I started off as being a personal trainer. Valley Total Fitness discovered me. I managed there for seven years and then decided to venture out and start my own. And I looked at my colleagues and I asked them, I said, do you think I would be successful leaving the corporate setting? And they said, you, yes. And I've always had a passion 
not just to be in health and wellness, but a passion for people and helping them to transform their lifestyle. It's not about weight loss. It's not about exercise management. It's the whole component. It's the wellness of the person, mind, body, and spirit. Wow. You know what, Ms. Brown, let me ask you this. That you know, you and I go back 25, 30-something years now. And um, my passion is my people. You know, black people. You know, we all have to. That don't mean that I'm pro-black. That don't mean I'm against anybody else. It's just that we have some disparities in our communities. And you just meant, especially in black communities, you know, our, our eating habits. And, uh, and we don't have... Uh, extremely amount of uh, access to health care. And, uh, and most of all, we're just not knowledgeable about what we're intaking with food, and we don't un sometimes may not understand the full benefits from exercising sometimes because it's contradictory. You can run around there and then you're eating pigtails or something, know, you know, <laughs> something like that. But, um, but you know, we was raised up because, you know, we come from the South and, uh, you know, all the way back from slavery, Whatever they had left, we had to eat. And so those traditions went from generation to generation. And, and, and from your perspective, I'm talking about black people now, African-American, indigenous people. What do you see from your profession? What do you see that's lacking in our community and how you can help us? One, well, I would say knowledge is one. Um the capability of being able, the resources that's available for learning and teaching, one, how to make those changes, and how can I help? I can help in a multitude of ways. Uh, one is education on nutrition and make you realize that a diet, and I say a diet, is not always, it's not always or should be the answer because we, we take on the mindset that I'm on a diet, but then when we're on a diet, do we realize what is the benefits or, I mean, the advantages or disadvantages? So meaning some diets you can be actually losing out on nutrition values that you should be receiving, your vitamins and your minerals, but you're seeing results. So every diet that you take on, and a diet is a trend, that you take on, you will see some type of result. But the question is, can you maintain that diet? Is it a lifestyle diet? So teach them one, what is the blueprint for yourself? Blueprint meaning what is some of the foods you should eat, you shouldn't eat, not necessarily always looking at calories, how do I do portions, not meaning necessarily that you can never have a piece of fried chicken again about how frequent or, I mean, how often can you have that fried chicken? Um, finding a diet that's, what I say, is a lifestyle. Fitness. Fitness is a science. Every exercise is an exercise is knowing the proper form and technique, but is it the exercise that's equivalent to what you need? So meaning someone may have a type of chronic disease that should not be performing that um, exercise. Your biomechanics might be off and might not be ready for it. Um, some chronic diseases, exercises you should not be doing over or above your head. So giving you education on what is the proper exercise or readiness of where you at. Culinary, culinary has become my baby um, that I birthed and continue to birth because once again, we cook, but we don't cook in the mindset of we cooking for our nutrition and our health. We actually destroy the food. We destroy the nutrition value that sometimes the liquid or the vitamins are left in the pot. Or we're breaking down the protein uh, that the cooking technique that we're using as far as the fat, uh, making it rancid. So once again, it always goes back to um, education, educate one, what is the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle and what's the benefits of taking on this new approach of eating, um, cooking, planning, meal planning, and exercise management. Well, you know, it's, it's written for the lack of knowledge that people perish. And, uh, you know, so uh, black people, all people, because of our diets, 
we getting all of these diseases and we actually dying from it, you know, at, at a record number. And, uh, and unfortunately, the government, with their regulation, they allow, like you say, the sugars and cereals and everything else, they allow that to go forth. And, and, um, and people are gobbling up through commercials and propaganda, all that stuff come into play. Right. And, and uh, uh, the fast food places in all our community, the food deserts in our communities, and things like that, all of this stuff is, it, 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 like I say, lack of knowledge. And, and, and we kind of cater to those things because we're taught. Now, see, I know these things because, you know, I'm in the media. And I tell people we own less than 1% of the media. And see, one of the main forces of media is advertisement. And uh, and so whatever they can sell, whatever they can cater to you. And black people, and I keep mentioning black people, but this is going towards all people, but black people are, are considered some of the greatest consumers out here. And um, you and I had a conversation, I think, about a week ago. And, and you mentioned something, it was like a revelation or evolution in, in, in your thought pattern because you catered to people, you catered to the Jewish community, to anybody who's willing to come forth who, who considered that help. But then all of a sudden you say it's like an evolution is that all of a sudden children came into your, your being, you know, uh, uh, to focus on children. Tell me how that come to be and, and, and why that's so significant in your futuristic planning. Well, one is because they are our lost community. And they don't know. And it's what we educate them with and expose, give them that exposure. And I feel as though a lot of our families, we're lost. We don't come to the table and we don't sit down at the table and eat a meal. We're not in the kitchen cooking. And as you just uh, mentioned, we're at the fast food restaurants, the McDonald's, not the healthiest thing for our youth. We're eating a lot of processed food. With the processed food, you have a lot of uh, preservatives in it, salt, sugar, all of the things that are not healthy. We're finding our youth, and I don't, and I don't want to say kids, our youth, because it can go anywhere from the age two on up that are now taking on what we once call adult chronic diseases, that we're finding obesity is high in our kids because they're not active. We're finding that we're allowing them to sit in front of the television or they're playing the games. But when we were coming up, we were out there, we were mm -hmm. jump roping, we were roller skating. P.E. is not the way P.E. was when we were in school. So, you know, I went to a couple of schools and I visit. And I would hear the PE teachers saying students fail in PE. That was unheard of in our time. So when you work with a child and bring or our youth and bring them in, they're not even involved in the kitchen. And they hear a parent say, my kid won't eat this. My kid don't like that. How do you know? If you get the kids' hands and mind involved in the kitchen and even in the shopping process of going in the market and allowing them to select items, bring them in the kitchen and let them participate in the cooking like Grandma used to do with us. Mm -hmm. Give them some items to cut up. Talk about the importance of the vegetables and them eating that vegetable. Allowing them to participate, actually preparing that meal and serving it at the table. That helps to build up their self-esteem, their knowledge, and the nutrition of going to school. Maybe some of the problems of our youth when they go to class, that their minds are now alert because they're mm -hmm. being fed the proper nutrition, that the teachers won't have the problems that they're having um, out of their behavior because lack of nutrition has an impact on the brain process, the brain the health of the brain. So when I look at that and I go into communities and do community service working with the youth, and you see some of the behavior is acting out because what they have, what they are being served. A lot of the food is not freshly prepared meals. It's processed meals. And when I see that, that really bothers me because we have to get back to feeding and giving our youth and I believe that will make a change in the community because some of these kids are hurting because what they're being offered and not what they're 
what they're being offered and not what they should be receiving. That's what that's powerful. You know, um, Miss Brown, as you know, I'm very concerned about my people. And I understand like the government, I understand um capitalism. I understand everybody trying to get a quick buck here and there. And I understand a lot of things, but I do know one thing that we are dying. Our jails are full of people because, uh, like I say, a lot of that could be done through nutritional values. You know, they sit up, like you say, acting up in school because some of the time they're hungry, sometimes because they're not full of sugar. You know, and they got all this extra energy and all this other stuff. You know, and they're acting up, acting out. And um, as I said to you before, for the lack of knowledge, our people perish. Now, in the perfect world, which there is none, but in the National Black Unity News, we, we pride ourselves on bringing solutions to our problems. And so here you are, a nutritionist, you're a fitness and wellness coach, you, you, you manufacture uh, 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 all types of um, products where uh, we can flavor our food and, and it would have nutritional values to them. So we don't have to use those old traditional ways of doing things. So you have a wealth of knowledge about the whole system pretty much when it comes to nutrition and, and, and health and wellness. And um, unfortunately, they're not teaching this in our school systems. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just a lot of things not being taught to us. And so here you are with all this wealth and not, and you know what's going on. You know why we're acting out this way. You know why we going to jail. You know why that we are being obese and, and, and we having all of these diseases at such an early age now. And so, since you are aware of all of this, and, and, and you have definitely put in the work just by just just on, on this brief conversation of all the different uh, expertises that you have. And so, since you have this information, and there's people who may see this video and, and, and may want to get in touch with you. Uh, 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 can you explain to people how you can help them and how they can get in touch with you? Um, and how that I can help them. I can help, them. once again, I can help them in a multitude of ways. As a health coach, a health coach helps you to identify certain aspects that need to make changes, and one is behavior. And I use this um, in my teachings and saying, let's look at the external environment versus the external envi internal environment. Your external environment is everything that you expose to. It's every relationship that you have a relationship. And a relationship does not necessarily mean an int uh, intimate relationship. It can be the relationship to the type of uh, air that you breathe. It can be the relationship to the exposure of the social environment that you encompass. It can be your relationship with your coworkers, your families, your friends, anybody, your relationship to food, your relationship to your home environment, coming in your home, if your home is not giving you that peace of serenity. So with all that being said, it has a process it has an impact on your thinking process. It doesn't give you that clarity. So that thinking process is your brain health. And your brain health can be stress. So if you take in on stress, stress can help the onset of different illness. You take on the stress of that brain health, that brain health has an impact on your gut health, and that gut health has an impact on your overall health. So as a health coach, it's help you to get beyond or past those barriers so now you can learn to eat healthy. You can learn to how to incorporate a fitness component or fitness, I want to say exercise management into your lifestyle. You can now learn how to get in and start having that self-care and that me time and cooking. And that basically summarizes what a, a, health, a health coach and a wellness coach does. The only thing with me, I am certified in all of those areas to be able to program design, an exercise program, 
that's directed to your specific need, meaning if you have some type of chronic illness as far as a diabetic or heart condition, um, cholesterol, or anything like that, I can sit down and design a program. If it's just general overall fitness, I can once again see where you have because you might have some muscle weakness. Your biomechanics might be off that we need to work around those to then get you up and expedite your workout regimen. When it comes to nutrition, once again, have you journal and look at where you at now and meet you where you at and not put you on restrictions unless it's something that's coming from a, a medical background that's saying that you need to be on certain types of restrictions. But helping you to look at your environment when it comes to nutrition and the foods that you should eat, the foods that how to prepare it. So that's where the cooking and help you to hone your cooking skills. I'm not saying that they are bad. You might not have any, but teach you the basics of how to have a healthy kitchen, which makes you a healthy environment and your healthy relationship with everybody. Okay. You know, again, um, they say you can add years to your life and you can take something away. And, and, and no quicker way that I can think of is, is by a lack of exercise and lack of nutrition. But at the same time, there's a lot of people from all I mentioned children to you earlier, but what about people in their midlife or, or people in their senior life? It, it, can the body reverse itself? Can it can it renew itself? Can you is it too late or what? You know, you do. Mr. Murphy, it's never too late. Hmm. And we should always once again start where we at and and, and if I say in that mid age Start where you at and begin something. And something, and I use this terminology, think of that you're an infant. An infant is helpless. So if you're looking at that you have never exercised before, you're clueless, you want to start somewhere. If it means getting outside and mother nature, I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't have a gym membership or I can't afford, and we talk about the black community. Okay, so a lot of us can't afford, even though we now have the Planet Fitness and the different ones that have cheaper memberships that's allowing that almost anyone should be able to have some type of membership. But Mother Nature is free. So it's no excuse why we cannot exercise if we get outside and we walk a couple of steps. And you can monitor and say, okay, I'm going to walk a block. And you gauge that block to two blocks. And you build up every week or once again, your body talks to you. So if you feel like if you're walking and you're so deconditioned, that body is so deconditioned and you feel like you're laboring and you're breathing, you slow your pace down and you, and you cut your distance and you build the court and how your body is teaching you. Because your body is teaching, but it's, I mean, it's, your body is talking to you, but your body is learning and readapting. So constantly challenge it, but know your limits. Um, outside of um, that with the seniors, we want to get up and move. God gave us, or our high supreme gave us limbs to move, to bend, to extend, use that flexibility, because as we all age, we get stiff if we're not moving. You have a heart. Your heart is a muscle. It gets deconditioned. So if you walk up a flight of stairs and you're out of breath, you decondition. That heart needs to stay strong if you want longevity to life. So once again, with that on the exercise, but the nutrition, as we age, we need to be more mindful of what we're eating because we don't want our organs to outage our age. So meaning the food that we eat, we're putting damage on our organs, and it's older than what our age is, that those organs will fail on us before it should because we're not taking care of ourselves. Wow. You know, you gave forth a lot of information right now, and it made me think because, as you know, I had a lot of health issues myself from even heart surgery, obesity, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and... and um, and I was able sometimes because of um, started eating more nutritional and um, started walking, just walking. I know a whole lot of stimulus stuff, 
uh, I lost weight and and I was able to, like you say, extend certain muscles before I couldn't. Like one time, I couldn't even bend over and tie my shoe. One time, you know, right. without, without, without laboring. Now it's easy for me because uh, I ask you that question because I know for myself that I've seen a reversal in, in, in my own lifestyle. And, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this to you. You know, money is a great thing. But it's said, it is said that a person who loses their health, they will pay every penny they have sometimes, a fortune, to get that health back. And so, you know, don't neglect your health. You know, because like I say, you only get one body. You need, we need, this is our vessel. This is our temple. We need to take better care of it. And if we don't know, we need to ask somebody. So again, Ms. Brown, can you give some information how people can get in touch with you so that you can advise them or, or, or maybe assist them so they can have a healthier lifestyle? Sure. They can email me at cbrown at cb lifestyle, and that's L-I-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E, coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G, dot com. Um, my number is 443-854-5096, as well as you can follow me on Facebook at Katherine Brown um, or Fit Nutrition, which is F dot I dot T Nutrition. Can you give your telephone number one more time so people may can give you a call? Yes. My number is 443-854-5096. And before we can close this thing down, man, I, I, I thank you for your time. And if I know you're a very busy lady, and, uh, and I appreciate you taking time with me today to, you know, so that we can educate our people so that they can be healthy, wealthy, as well as wise. But, we, uh, one thing we didn't mention, what you do, like I say, you're very multifaceted in, in a lot of areas, but you also do speaking engagements as well, don't you? Yes, I do. I do. Um, my services that I offer is, and I'll list it, and it, it's very, very broad. So I'm a health coach, a medical fitness trainer, a nutrition specialist, a certified culinary chef, as also um, I only prepare healthy meals and plant-based meals, which is under the um, healthy meals. And I also do public um, public speaking engagements as well as cooking demos, come into business, small organizations, um, faith-based, and offer um, culinary arts classes as far as hands-on cooking classes, cooking demos, or nutrition education, or overall wellness education as well, too. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I say, Miss um, Catherine Brown, like I say, she's well read, and I and I had the privilege to see her evolution over the years because she's constantly, right now, she's still working on things that um, upgrading her service. So she, she serves as one of my role models because, um, you know, I, I know for a fact it takes – dedication. It's a passion you have to have to continue to do what you do in spite of all the challenges in life. You know, and, and Ms. Brown, she's she's like that energized buddy. You know, no matter what happens, she's to continue to just keep moving on, you know, and uh, we appreciate you. And I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, pick up the phone. Ms. Brown is accessible because the life you save may just be your own. Give her a call. If you have an organization or church faith-based organization and you want to keep our people healthy, give her a call. She'll work something out with you. And I thank you, Ms. Brown, for your time, and I appreciate you, and you take good care, and God bless. Take care. Thank you, and God bless you as well.